Hi guys. Um, I hope you're doing well and uh, staying safe and healthy. Um, what I'm doing now is kind of going over um, kind of the introduction to this new unit on uh, painting and color. All right. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to go through this quickly. I'm also going to give you access to this PowerPoint um, in Final Sight. So if you want to go back and go through it on your own, um, you certainly can. But you'll also have this video to uh, to review. Um, I'm just kind of going to go through it with you guys as I would in class if we were in school right now to um, give you a little bit of context to some of it. Um, but most of it's pretty self-explanatory. I think if you guys just, you're all <clears throat> smart enough to uh, kind, of, kind of just go through the presentation yourselves and figure this stuff out. But I figured I'd go ahead and just record things. So um, let's go through it. All right. I know you, some of you have been waiting a long time to uh, start color, so. All right, the first thing we're gonna do in this unit is work on a color wheel. And you guys have seen these before. I mean, even in like middle school and grade school, you guys I'm sure have seen color wheels. Um, a color wheel is basically just a, a visual tool that artists use as a way to kind of organize um, color harmonies and understanding the colors of the spectrum, All right? I know in science class, you guys have heard of a uh, Roy G. Biv, uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. It's kind of a, a way to remember the colors of the spectrum, the light spectrum, all right? Um, and when we're talking about color, we're really talking about light and how um, light waves um, behave on different objects, okay? When you are looking around in nature and observing different colors on things, what you're really doing, your eyes are recording different light waves at different frequencies. And some of those waves are being absorbed by the objects and some of them are being reflected back at you. And whichever waves, light waves are being reflected or absorbed um, is, going to determine which color you're seeing okay so um, there are different types of colors um, and we can organize colors not only in terms of harmonies but in terms of things like temperature um, color has a lot of symbolic connotations too um, sometimes we uh, think of certain colors um, as conveying certain emotions some colors have a calming effect. Some have um, the opposite effect. Um, so, you know, color is a very complex kind of subject, especially when we're talking about art. But colors can definitely be symbolic. Um, but it's important to, you know, and, and sometimes we think of color in terms of temperature as well, like warm colors versus cool colors. Um, usually the reds and yellows are, are the warmer colors and the the blues and, and purples and greens are more um, cool colors. Um, so um, it's just a, a good thing to, to have some understanding of how we think of color, all right? Um, but um, basically the color wheel is a, is a tool, a visual tool to help us sort of organize and understand all the stuff okay so in this color wheel here this is going to be exactly like the one we're going to we're going to work on um and it's divided up into three different types of colors as you can see here primary secondary and tertiary colors okay the primaries and you'll see them in that center triangle there um right here and also, you'll notice that the little um, triangles point to their corresponding color on the wheel itself. Um, red, yellow, and blue are the primary colors. And the reason why they're primaries is because you can't create those 
colors any other way. They just are. You have to kind of purchase them as they are, right? You can, there are different types of reds and yellows and blues, but essentially you can't mix a red or a yellow or a blue, like, like a basic, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't know how a better way to explain it, but they're the, the most um, fundamental pared down building blocks of all other colors. They are like the molecules or the atoms of all other colors. If I'm trying to find a scientific analogy there. Right, so red, yellow, and blue, those are, those are like the bottom floor, the first rung of the ladder. When we're talking about colors. And theoretically, you can create all the other colors based on those three if you mix them in different proportions. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. So primaries are red, yellow, and blue. Now the secondary colors are created by mixing two primaries. So again, here on our little triangle here, if we mix a red and a yellow, you get orange. In there, in there we see it there on the wheel. If we mix red and blue, we get violet or purple. If we mix blue and yellow, we get green. So green, violet, and orange are secondary colors. And again, they are created by mixing two primaries in pretty equal proportions. Another thing we're going to talk about is, is how is proportions when we when we mix color. Okay, it's important. Finally, we have tertiary colors. And those are kind of the intermediate colors between primaries and secondaries on the wheel. So if we mix a primary and a secondary together, we'll get a tertiary color. So, so tertiary or intermediate colors are things like red-orange, blue-violet, blue-green, yellow-orange, etc. Okay? So... Those are our three basic types of colors on the color wheel. Are there more colors than this? Of course there are. But these are the basic colors of the spectrum, right? There are, there are other colors where, you, you know, we, we can get into tones and grays and blacks and whites and, and browns, earth, earth tones. None of those are, in, are part of the color wheel. Those are separate things we'll talk about, okay? Um, this is just... Colors of the light spectrum on, on this color wheel, okay? Now, color harmonies are combinations of colors that are pleasing to the eye or harmonious to the eye. So these are colors that when we see them combined in a design or a work of art, um, they work well together and they tend to be, again, harmonious. They, they play well with each other, all right? Um, and you'll notice this a lot, um, like once in a minute when we start talking about examples. Um, so the color wheel is handy because it, it allows you to, to identify these different harmonies really easily. Um, so if you are planning a work of art or a color design, it's very helpful to know these different harmonies so you can pick them out. All right, so triadic is a <clears throat> the first one and it's, it's the uh, color scheme that um, involves a triangle you have three equally spaced colors on the color wheel um that form a, a triangle um so these harmonies are very vibrant um even if you're using um more unsaturated versions of, of these colors so like if you're adding some white to these or some gray to kind of push them back a little bit they're still going to be pretty 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 vibrant um pretty attention getting um so examples of a triadic harmony would be a primary color scheme red yellow and blue on the color wheel are equally spaced so that that would be an example of a triadic harmony um secondaries as well are also uh, triadic Okay, and then you can see some examples here on the right of, of triadic schemes. Um, analogous color schemes are another one, and these are colors that are right next to each other on the wheel. And usually, you're you're 
you're picking like three colors next to each other, but you could do up to four or five if you really wanted to. The trick to an analogous scheme, though, is that you don't want to use them all in equal amounts. You're going to want to choose one color to kind of dominate a little bit more than the others and then have the other colors sort of be accents to that main color, um, if that makes sense. Okay. So analogous colors, again, anywhere from three to five colors next to each other on the wheel. Three is usually a better, a safer bet. Um, and you are trying to uh, make one color the dominant color and have the other ones um, support it. Okay. Next is square. Um, similar to triadic, but um, a square scheme has four colors instead of three. And again, they are equally spaced on the wheel. And they give you a square, or in this case, kind of like a diamond shape. All right. And again, just like analogous colors, a square harmony works best when you allow one color to be more dominant than the others. You don't want to have all four colors in equal amounts in your design. Have one be the dominant one and have the other one sort of um, being the, the backup or the support. Okay. Uh, complementary colors are colors that are opposite each other on the wheel. Um, so red and green, right? We think of colors like red and green as like Christmas color schemes, right? Uh, but they are complementary schemes. They're opposite each other on the wheel. Just as blue and orange are, or yellow and violet. Now, of course, I went to uh, East Carolina University, and our school colors are, are purple and yellow, purple and gold. So that's also an example. I mean, when I see those colors, I think of where I went to school. But they're also a complementary color scheme. All right, so anything opposite each other on the wheel is a complementary color scheme. Two colors, okay? Um, split complementary is similar to complementary, except the difference is, is that you are forming, again, sort of like a triad, a, a three, three color scheme. And what you're doing is you're choosing a color and then choosing the two colors that are on either side or that are adjacent to its complement. So in this example here on the right, you see the color we've picked is green. And then the two colors that go along with it are orange, uh, red orange and red violet. Um, because they are the colors that are adjacent to red. All right, so you've got a color. And then the two colors that are on either side of its complement. That's a split complementary. All right, a rectangular or tetradic scheme, similar to the square scheme, is again four colors. And it's usually um, basically arranged into two complementary pairs. So, um, as you can see here, you've got an example of you've got. Basically, it's, it's, it's a set of two complements together. So in this example, you've got red and green and orange and blue. So two sets of complements together. Um, and again, this works best if you let one color be dominant and use the other ones as accent colors. Okay, that's, that's the key to colors, um, color schemes, is that um, a lot of times in, in, in paintings and things, um, you can have other colors in there. You don't have to just use only the colors that that are in the harmony but you just want to make sure those other colors are not dominant they are not taking away from that harmony they're just kind of accents they're support colors okay so we also now are moving on to monochromatic which is basically one color but you're using tints shades and tones of that one color and you can use an infinite number. All right, so what are tint shades and tones? All right, in this case, we have orange, okay? A tint, so, so this first swatch here on each of these examples is the original color. 
Now, if you add different amounts of white to this pure hue or pure, pure color, hue is just another word for color, right? You're going to see different tints of that color, right? See how it gradually gets lighter? So think of it almost as like a, like a value scale for, for color, okay? Um, but you're only adding white to it. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Sorry about that. Whoops. I am... Skipping ahead, didn't mean to click on that, sorry. Okay, so adding white to a color makes it a tint. Adding black to a color makes it a shade. So you can see here, by adding a little bit more black to, the, to this orange, you're gonna get, it almost makes it brown in a way. Um, you're, you're, at, you're making it a shade, okay? So again, think of the value scale, all right? So a tint would be in the lower values, or lower part of the scale. And then the upper part of the scale would be shades, where you're adding black instead of white. Um, finally, tones are when you add gray. Okay, And adding gray is going to basically make the color less saturated. All right? Saturation refers to the, the amount of purity in a color. Like if you take a color and kind of put it straight out of the tube, it's going to be pretty saturated, right? Um, but it, if you start adding white or black or gray to a color, you're taking, you're, you're toning down the intensity or the saturation of the color. So again, think of intensity, think of uh, saturation as intensity. Okay, so and you can see here on these examples, how that orange is kind of getting more and more muted as you go down the scale until it almost looks like pure gray. Okay. So, monochromatic color schemes deal with tints, shades, or tones. Right? That's another example of a harmony. Okay. So, let's look at some examples. All right. If we were in class, I'd be asking you guys to call out answers, but I'll go ahead and answer them for you. So, couple paintings by Van Gogh here. Um, so which color harmonies do you, do you see being used here? Right. If you answered complimentary, you'd be correct. Van Gogh was a huge fan of complimentary color schemes, which ironically is why a lot of people back then did not like his work, because they thought it was the colors were too bold and too bright and too kind of garish. Um, but now, of course, we see the fact that Van Gogh was really a genius. Um, and again, if you look at both of these examples, you see other colors in here, right? I mean, there isn't just orange and blue in this picture. We've got some yellows and some whites and a little bit of green in there. Um, right, so we've got some some more examples of other colors, but again, they are not the dominant colors. Right, they are just support. A little bit of black up here too in the shutters. Right, so there's other colors here, but the dominant dominant colors being used in this composition are the blues and the oranges. So it's complementary by far. Same with this one. We've got reds and greens. Okay, red and green again are complementary color schemes. We have some other colors. All right, we've got kind of a red orange up here. A little bit of like a very pale blue in the hat some gray dark grays here a little bit of brown um, but the dominant the dominant colors are the the reds and the greens um, so again that's that's what's kind of dominating this composition all right all right Cezanne a French post-impressionist painter um, Again, really great use, great use of color um, in his designs. And um, this is a, an analogous color scheme, all right? We've got several different colors being used here, like kind of next to each other on the color wheel, okay? And again, mixed in with other colors, for sure. Um, this was an example of, of, you know, again, he's kind of just looking at, you know he's he's doing like a landscape kind of a kind of a picture so he's kind of just painting what he's seeing but he's 
he's doing it in a semi-abstract way. This is not like a a realistic, naturalistic painting. He's sort of, you know, focusing more on shapes. And um, again, he's a, he's a post-impressionist, so he's more the the impressionists were really more interested in how how light affects color and you know atmospheric effects on on a on a painting. Um, so he's sort of interested in that, but he's taking it a little step beyond, so where he's getting into semi abstraction. Um, but color wise, you know, he's pretty much just doing representational um, color usage, right? Blue sky, green grass, um, you know, yellow buildings, etc. Um, but even though he's really more concerned about light in this. Remember, light and color go hand in hand. So um, if we look at the color wheel, we see that a lot of these colors are kind of next to each other on the wheel. So analogous is what, what I would definitely classify that as. Okay, a couple more. Picasso, the old guitarist from his blue period. Um, and I would definitely uh, say that's um, monochromatic. And again, the guitar is what really stands out in this composition because it's a warm color. You've got all these cool uh, blues, um, different tones and shades and, and tints of blue in here. But then you've got this sort of brown guitar um, that sort of is it's warm and it kind of sets itself apart from everything else in a, in a really effective way. So it's not just all blue. There's a little difference, but the dominant scheme here is monochromatic using blue. Um, and then over here on the right, uh, Piet Mondrian, who did a lot of pieces like this, a lot of really flat, a lot of flat color abstractions dealing with, with shape-based compositions, um, lots of rectangles and squares. He did a ton of these. Um, and again, I would definitely classify this as a triadic color scheme using primaries. All right, red, yellow, and blue. Now, now, yeah, there's some black and white in here too to kind of offset everything else, but by and large, the primaries are what dominate that composition. Okay, so hopefully these examples are helping you kind of see that, you know, when you're, when you're doing a painting, you can have other colors in there as long as they are not interfering with or distracting from the, the main harmony that you've got going on, okay? So that's basically it for the harmonies. Hopefully this will help you, I'm doing it again, skipping ahead. All right, hopefully um, you guys will um, be able to use this information and then be able to watch the video on YouTube that I'm gonna leave you for mixing and, and creating your your uh, color wheel. All right. Now this next part um, is for after we do the color wheel and have a little bit of experience mixing colors. All right. We are going to eventually um, do a still life and paint it. Okay. And so this next section is going to deal with that. And I think what I'm going to do is make a separate video for it, even though it is part of this PowerPoint. Um, I don't know that I really need to go over this now. I think it'd be better if I held off on this um, until like next week or the week after, and then we can kind of go over this stuff later. All right. So for now, um, and again, if you want to skip ahead, if, if you want to go into the uh, PowerPoint under resources and um, skip ahead to this stuff you can look at the stuff if you want to um, but this is kind of again just really quickly I'll, I'll flip through it talking about how to develop a painting from a pencil sketch uh, to a final painting all right and then there's a little video here there's a lot of there's a lot of good YouTube videos on this stuff um, which are helpful um, but I'm going to, again, hold off on that until later for another video, okay? So 
if you have any questions on color harmonies, the other thing that I would recommend is, again, in your um, in your uh, paint set that I gave you, there's a little color guide in a little plastic baggie that's going to have all this information on it, all these informa all this information about the color wheel and all the different color harmonies, all the different combinations of colors. It's all in there. Um, so I really, really recommend that you guys hold on to that guide don't lose it and and use it and, and in the other video that i that i made about um mixing the color wheel um i talk about that a little bit in a little bit more detail okay so for now just focus on your color wheel and mixing your colors and we're going to do another assignment um where you're, you're going to make a make a an abstracted design and um paint it in different color harmonies. Then after that, we will work on this. So I'm gonna make another video about this and I'll post that later, okay? So that's it for now. Um, if you have any questions, um, I definitely want you guys to check in with me on Zoom during class time um, and ask any questions you might have, all right? And um, that's it, so take care luck and um, we'll talk to you soon.